Hi everybody, you've understood the basics of balance sheets. Let's in this video really get into the balance sheet, understanding it by looking at scenarios and how they will be recorded on the balance sheet. We're going to start with the bank being created by shareholders putting in £25 million of their money into the bank. How will that be recorded? Well, it's £25 million of shareholders' funds. That means that total liabilities is going to be £25 million. Right, how is that going to be recorded on the asset side? Because we know that assets must equal liabilities plus capital. So there's got to be £25 million of assets here. Well, that directly will be recorded as cash. So £25 million of cash there, which means that total assets is £25 million. We have got a balanced balance sheet. The bank now decides to lend £20 million worth of this money out in the form of mortgages and other loans. How will this be recorded on the balance sheet? Well, it's going to be £20 million off cash. So that's going to be £5 million and £20 million will go in advances. Remember, advances will constitute loans and mortgages, for example. So £20 million will go into advances. We've got £25 million of assets, £25 million of liabilities still. We have a balanced balance sheet. Now remember that it doesn't have to be a recording in the liabilities section which will match a recording in the assets section or a recording in the assets section which will be matched by a recording in the liabilities section. What could happen is there might be a drop in one of these assets recovered by an increase in the value of another asset which still gives you a balanced balance sheet. That's exactly what's happened here. As long as we've got balance between the two sections, we are fine. A further £1 million is used to buy IT equipment in this bank. Well, how's that going to be recorded? It's going to be £1 million off cash, so from £5 million there to £4 million, and it's going to be an entry of £1 million in fixed assets. Remember that fixed assets is made up of things like property, of machinery, so IT equipment would fall under that category. We have a balanced balance sheet, so the £25 million and £25 million. Things start getting serious now. Depositors come to the bank and they put in £25 million of their own savings into the commercial bank. Well, clearly, that's going to be £25 million of deposits there, and that's going to increase total liabilities from £25 million to £50 million. How is that going to be recorded on the asset side of the balance sheet? Well, I'm going to simplify this and say that directly it's going to be an increase in cash from £4 million to £29 million, which means that total assets is going to increase to £50 million, right there. Now, it is a simplification because in my previous videos, we've learned that what a commercial bank will do when deposits are put in the bank will be to keep a fraction, not necessarily as cash, but at their bank account at the Bank of England. So in truth, what I should have done is I should have put some of this money as reserves at the Bank of England. But just to simplify things, I'll put it all as cash. It's fine for this example, but remember that a fraction will be kept uh, in the Bank of England at their bank account as reserves. Me simplifying it and putting it all as cash doesn't matter for this example. We still have a balanced balance sheet now of 50 million and 50 million. Excellent. The bank now decides to buy up 10 million pounds worth of short-term government bonds and also to lend 5 million pounds out in the interbank lending market. Well, that's 15 million pounds in total, which we will take off cash. So 15 million pounds taken off there, which will take us to 14 million pounds. 10 million pounds of short-term government bonds have been bought up, that's short-term investment. And 5 million pounds has been lent out in the interbank lending market. That's money at short notice there. 5 million pounds that goes in there. We have got a balanced balance sheet of 50 million, 50 million, great. Let's now say the commercial bank gets really lucky and earns 20 million pounds worth of interest from the bonds that it's holding. Ridiculous, I know, but let's just go with it for this situation here. How's that going to be recorded? Well, immediately, it's an increase in cash from 14 million to 34 million pounds, which increases total assets from 50 million pounds to 70 million pounds. How's that going to be recorded on the liability section? Well, it's an increase in retained profit. So 20 million pounds there, which is going to increase total liabilities from 50 million pounds to 70 million pounds. And you can clearly see we have a balanced balance sheet. Let's now say that the bank borrows 50 million pounds from the money markets and decides to buy five buildings with total value of 50 million pounds. 
Well, 50 million pounds worth of borrowing in the money market, that's short-term borrowing, so 50 million goes there, that will increase total liabilities from 70 million to 120 million pounds. And they buy five buildings with total value 50 million, that's going to increase fixed assets from 1 million here to 51 million pounds, which is going to increase total assets from 70 million pounds to 120 million pounds, which means we have got a balanced balance sheet. Crucial now, depositors come to the bank and they want 10 million pounds of their money back. How's that going to be recorded? Well, 10 million will come off deposit, so from 25 million pounds to 15 million pounds, which is going to reduce total liabilities from 120 million to 110 million pounds there. Where's the hit on the asset side? Well, it can be any of the short-term assets that the bank holds, also known as current assets. 10 million can go from either of those. We're just going to say that cash will reduce immediately. So from 34 million to 24 million cash there, which will reduce total assets from 120 million to 110 million. Now this is a very important recording. If ever depositors come back and want their money back, it's these four, cash, reserves at the Bank of England, money at short notice, and short-term investments that will need to pay off the depositors. So these are called current assets, short-term assets, highly liquid assets, that will be used to pay back any of these short-term liabilities, which deposits is one of, okay? So that's how the recording will take place. I've said it's gonna be decrease in cash, it could be decrease in any of these four parts of the asset section. That's how a reduction in deposits will be counted by a reduction in assets in the balance sheet. We have a balanced balance sheet now, all is good. Let's now say that the bank wants to raise long-term finance of 16 million pounds by issuing its own corporate bonds. Well, that's 16 million pounds worth of long-term borrowing, and that will be recorded there, which means that total liabilities will increase to 126 million pounds. And that directly will be an increase in cash, which will take us from 24 million pounds to 40 million pounds here, which means that total assets will increase from 110 million to 126 million pounds, meaning that we have a balanced balance sheet. Let's now say that the bank wants to buy up 5 million pounds worth of RBS shares, thinking that to be a safe and logical investment strategy, bonkers I know, but let's say that's what they do, and they also want to lend out 30 million pounds to an entrepreneur who wants to develop driverless car technology. No collateral, no security to that, just a simple 30 million pound loan. How will that be recorded? Well, it's 35 million pounds in total that will be taken off cash. So cash will go from 40 million pounds to 5 million pounds. 5 million pounds worth of RBS shares are bought up, that will be long term investments for the commercial bank of 5 million pounds and 30 million pounds to the entrepreneur which will increase advances from 20 million pounds to 50 million pounds. No change in total assets, still 126 million which means that we have got a balanced balance sheet. This is a very important scenario now, let's assume that 10 million pounds of the mortgages that the commercial bank has issued go bad, individuals default on those mortgages. How's that going to be recorded? Well, it's going to be 10 million pounds wiped off advances here. 10 million pounds wiped off advances to 40 million pounds. I'm going to make the assumption that the bank doesn't get the house back. So no house is regained at all, which means that total assets will fall from 126 million pounds to 116 million pounds. Okay? Now, in truth, in reality, a house will be gained, in which case there will be a loss in the advances section here, but that might be regained with an increase in fixed assets, depending on what that house value is. If the house value is enough to regain the loss, then fine. If not, then there needs to be a recording in the liability section. But we're assuming here that no house has been regained, which means total assets now has fallen to £116 million. What about in the liability section? How is that going to be recorded? Well. It's capital that takes the hit, and that's so important for you guys to know. If any loans go bad and they are underwritten, right, they have to be wiped off the balance sheet, it's capital that will take a hit in the liability section. If we go into more business specific territory here, it's going to be a hit in the retained profit part of capital. So it's going to be 10 million pounds lost here, 
of retained profit, taking us from 20 to 10 million pounds, which means that total liabilities will drop from 126 million pounds to 160 million pounds. And then we've got a balanced balance sheet. So the key thing for you to know is that any losses in loans, any loans that go bad, it's capital that will take the hit. That's very important. Therefore, it's important for a bank to make sure that they've got enough capital to offset any losses in loan values. We have a balanced balance sheet here. Excellent. Two crucial scenarios coming up now, guys. Let's assume first that all the loans that this commercial bank has issued go completely bad. What's going to happen? Well, we know that advances will be wiped out. 40 million pounds lost in advances, which will take total assets to 76 million pounds. We've learned from my last scenario that it's capital that will take the hit. The bank has got to make sure that they've got enough capital to offset the loss of these loan values. Well, in this case, the bank doesn't have enough capital to offset the 40 million pounds loss of loans. They've only got 35 million pounds worth of capital, which means that liabilities can only fall to 81 million pounds, but total assets will be 76 million pounds. Liabilities, i.e. what the bank owes, will be more than what the bank actually owns. That is an unsustainable position. That is bank failure, known as insolvency. I'm going to cover that in my next video in a bit more detail. But if 40 million pounds worth of the loans that the bank has issued go bad, the bank will fail because they don't have enough capital to offset that. Very important for you to know that scenario of insolvency. Another crucial scenario here, let's say that all the depositors want their money back and all the short-term lenders to the commercial bank want their money back too. That's the short-term liabilities in total of 65 million pounds. For the bank to pay that money off, they need to have short-term liquid assets of 65 million pounds. Does this bank have that? Well, they've got five million pounds of cash, five million pounds of money at short notice and 10 million pounds worth of short-term investment. These are the four one, two, three, four, short-term assets known as current assets, very liquid assets, that can be used to pay off any short-term liabilities. In total, that's only 20 million pounds of current assets, short-term assets, that the bank has to pay off their short-term liabilities, but the short-term liabilities are 65 million pounds. This bank doesn't have enough money to pay off their short-term liabilities. That's known as a liquidity crisis. There'll be panic setting in here and a run on the bank. This is another source of bank failure, which I'm going to cover in my next video. So if the bank doesn't have enough short-term assets, also known as current assets, to pay off its short-term liabilities, also known as their current liabilities, then that is a liquidity crisis. That is another source of bank failure. Stay tuned for my next video where I cover the two sources of bank failure in more detail. But now you understand all the different recordings that can take place on a commercial bank's balance sheet. If you understand this, you've got the balance sheet perfect. Stay tuned for the next video, a very important one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in that video.